Hello and welcome to The Hearing. I'm John. And I'm Scotto. And without any further ado, on to this week's album, which is from 2016, Zonky by Umphreys McGee. Umphreys McGee is an American jam band originally from South Bend, Indiana. The band experiments with many musical styles, including rock, metal, funk, jazz, blues, reggae, electronic, bluegrass, and folk. I think they cover them all on this album. Oh, yeah. Uh, according to keyboardist Joel Cummins, in reference to the name of the band, the origins are, he, he says, quote, the origins are of an actual person. Brendan Bayless, our other singer and guitar player, has a cousin, and his name is actually Humphrey McGee. Um, Humphrey with an H and yeah. M-A-G-E-E. Um, but it's not possessive with the apostrophe S. So they got their name from a person. Uh, Zonky is Humphrey McGee's 10th studio album. It consists of mashups combining various covers crossing different musical genres. It was released on November 11th, 2016 on Nothing Too Fancy Music, produced by Umphreys McGee and Manny Sanchez, and features Brendan Bayless on guitar and vocals, uh, Jake Sininger, apologies if I mispronounced that, on guitar, keyboards, and vocals, Joel, Joel Cummins on keyboards and vocals, Ryan, Sa- S- S- Ryan Stastic on bass and vocals, Chris Myers on drums and vocals, Andy Farrag on percussion, and guest musician Jennifer Hartswick guest vocals on track five. Um, now, a reminder, of course, I don't edit any songs into our into our episodes, but uh, for copyright reasons. But down in the description and on our blog at johnscato.com, you'll find links to Zonky on Spotify and YouTube. Before we get to the tracks, just uh, full disclosure, I am not a fan of mashups. <laughs> no. Every once in a while, I hear one that I think is clever, but I really don't care for them. So I'm kind of coming at this from a little bit of a hostile perspective. <laughs> Just to put that out there right from the top. Um, track one, National Luther, Loser Anthem. This is a combination of the National Anthem by Radiohead, Loser by Beck, and In the Air Tonight by Phil Collins. Right. The In the Air Tonight is this... Uh strange swerve that it takes at the end yeah it kind of comes in out of nowhere um i hadn't heard the radio song so i had radio head song so i had to listen to that beforehand um there's a handful of songs on this that, that, that they referenced that i hadn't heard before um i do like the groove on that one and i'm not typically a radiohead fan um it's uh i i think and it's it speaks to just how well they pair the songs together the fact that the 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 Radiohead keyboards fit in with the the loser melody together, mm-hmm. or for songs you normally would not think of. But then, yeah, the, out, out of nowhere, the in the air tonight comes together. It comes in, and then, which I mean, they kind of do a few times of this where you like just out of nowhere yeah, right. they kick a song and you're like, wait, what? <laughs> I think the rap on um, Loser sounds great. They did a great job on that one. It yeah. works really well over the groove from the Radiohead song. Um, and the two grooves work really well together um, in the chorus. Um, in or, you know, up, or I'd say up until the chorus of Loser. I think it falls a bit apart. Falls apart a bit there. Um, the Loser riff, uh, which is actually Midnight Rider by the Almonds. Right, right. Um, works well with the chaotic part of National Anthem, yeah. But then in the air tonight, come kind of comes out of nowhere. <laughs> and then it's it, what it's our chaos when they have the three of them together. <laughs> yeah, um, it kind of feels like a last part of the song. Um, yes, the guitar sound is is a bit better than Sturmer, I have to admit. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean these guys. I, you know, we go back with these guys. Remember they when, when we had the Tuesday afternoon show, we did musical guests. Oh right. And, and these guys, I think they gave us like two of their songs back That's in the day. That's why I I know them. That's where I know them from. Okay. Yeah. Because I knew I'd heard of them quite some time ago. Sometimes they're actually called prog, but I mean... They're jam. Yeah, they're jam. I mean, the difference <laughs> between the two. Too. <laughs> and I've realized as I've gotten older, I mean, and I'm in the you know in my 40s, I'm kind of losing interest in both. Because you know, oh, I'm really? a long-time prog head, and I've, I've always kind of had a soft spot for jam. But as I'm getting older, I kind of want to just hear a song, not some guitar player or keyboard player wanking for 10 minutes. I mean, I I am still very deep into Prague and, mm. and getting and getting more and more into it, like finding other bands to 
that I, you know, never mm-hmm. really gave that much of a listen to in the past. Jam bands, there are very few that that can keep my attention, and Umphreys is has always been one of them because mm-hmm. they, I think. I think they just take a much more interesting approach to it. They kind of take a prog approach to the jam band, which I think makes it a bit more interesting than just kind of noodling. Hmm. Now, in back to this uh, National Loser Anthem, the rap over In the Air Tonight is amazing. <laughs> yes. You're just kind of like, wow, wait, what? <laughs> I don't know why that hasn't been sampled a million times. Uh, yeah, I don't think it... I'm trying to remember... There was a rap. I'm sure it has that... been, but it, it it's not like one of those really common samples. I know "Take Me Home"'s been sampled. Like mm. they they kind of gave him the sting treatment, you know. After oh, okay. Puffy did that, they uh-huh. they did try to do that with "Take." Someone tried to do that with "Take Me okay. Home," where he even sang on it with them. Okay. Hmm. Um. But yeah, that just worked too well with the rap. Um. And the two end choruses are interesting together. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's Loser and in the air. That whole chaos at the end where it's like all three of them. <laughs> mm-hmm. On to track two, Life During Exodus. This is a combination of Exodus by Bob Marley and the Whalers, Life During Wartime by Talking Heads, 25 or 6 to 4 by Chicago, and City of Tiny Lights <laughs> by Frank Zappa. I mean, I think they shouldn't have had two that did this together because i mean there's so much on this album where it is just two songs mashed up and that's it and the two song mashups work better i think generally right i think they should have separated these guys to you know not have the same thing going on at the same time the only one i hadn't heard before was the marley song Um, really yeah i hadn't heard exodus um oh wow my my bob marley knowledge is is a bit slim um i should probably do a deep dive well, yeah, I mean, that's a guy, I mean, he kind of, you know, he mixed, but he definitely, that's a guy that just, a straight up song, if you're into that sort yeah, of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have to be in the right mood for reggae. Um, but they did a nice Marley impression uh, on the song. It's weird how reggae's been treated, you know, how, I guess it's been co-opted by like a frat, white frat yeah, yeah. culture. Well, it was when... co-opted before that by New Wave. Hmm. Yeah, but I guess that's different. I mean, they were they, they were really appreciating the music yeah, yeah. and the and the message too. And they were developing it. But the, the 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 reggae. I mean, especially if you're listening to Marley, a lot of it is very strong protest music. Oh yeah. Oh, it's it's all about the lyrics. Yeah. Um. It's like you know country and blues. It's it's the the music just serves the lyrics. It is very similar to those genres where it you're you're kind of locked into a certain format too. But I think he he added so many you know so much soul and R and B to it that that. And the groove yeah. from Exodus is actually surprisingly close to the groove from Life During Wartime. Not the instrumentation, but the basic rhythm. Right. I think I saw something where the singer was saying, "I don't know if we should have like a white guy from the Midwest singing." Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> Marley. Right. He, and but they go, yeah. But listen to this. And he starts like life during wartime. <laughs> it's like, oh, see, I think I, I saw the what they had said. The um, the origin for this was they would do like a Halloween show, and they would just do like some of these for Halloween, kind of dressing up as other band. And they just took the ones they liked best from mm-hmm. that okay. somewhere out there. They said they they. There's probably a recording of them doing Thriller and the Wall together, or another brick in the wall. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it is a nice transition into life during wartime because those grooves match up so nicely. Yeah. Um, I think and... that's the one thing you can really take away from this album. The, the, the songs they took and put together, a lot of them are really just very similar songs. Yeah. And I mean, I'm going to be pretty critical of this album because, again, not a mashup fan, but I can't fault the performances. The band is amazing. Um, the song choices are really solid. Um, Marley's lyrics with Talking Heads in the background was amazing. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, they there was a slight change to the life, and then they flip and they do you know Talking Heads over, over you know over top of Marley. Right. They did slightly change the lyrics. I have to call them out. Um, you ought to know not to stand by the window, and the way they sing it is someone might see you up there. Burns saying somebody see you up there. 
Oh yeah. I gotta call out that that slight alteration to the lyric. Huh. Um, the instrumental break was very Zappa. It's been a long time since I've heard Tiny Lights. I thought that was it. It's not. It was just M. Freeze doing their thing. Um, interesting lead into twenty five or six to four. Right. They just kind of use it for the guitar solo. They don't right. quote the lyrics at all. It is weird how they they just kind of throw that in there. I, it's probably not my favorite uh, left turn mm -hmm. of, the, I, of the. I really like the song, so it was nice to just hear a reference yeah. to it. But it was kind of a throwaway, and that leads perfectly into Zappa because it, if you know twenty five or six to four, um, the guitar I can't think of his name Terry something or other, the lead guitarist from Chicago at the time really goes off in that solo. He was a beast, yeah. Um, and Zappa, they, they transition very nicely from his style to Zappa's style. Yeah. His lead guitar style. And it just is a really nice transition into City of Tiny Lights. Um, and they pull off Zappa. Yeah, well, I can't say much more about gonna, this band. They pull off Zappa. If there's anybody that's going to pull off Zappa, it's going to be Humphreys. <laughs> but yeah, this one went on a journey. At first, it was my favorite. At least, you know, at this point, you know. Coming in, you know, coming back to a lifetime in Exodus, the end was a nice touch. Just put a nice capper on it. Yeah. Um, on to track three, Can't Rock My Dream Face. I love some of these titles. <laughs> this is a combination of Rock With You by Michael Jackson, Dreams by Fleetwood Mac, and Can't Feel My Face by The Weeknd. I've never I heard that one. I skimmed I Can't Feel My Face beforehand. Then I realized I've pretty much heard the entire song. Oh, really? In bits and pieces. I knew the chorus. I, I, it turns out I had pretty much heard the whole song in bits and pieces. Hmm. And you know what? I, don't even, I don't even know if I remember it actually in the song. And I've listened to this album a lot of times. Oh, it's definitely there toward the end. Um, oh, yeah. Because it starts with Michael Jackson, and yeah. it is spot on. <laughs> the Rock With You sounds like a fucking sample. And then... It goes right into Fleetwood Mac. It works too well, that transition. It's so weird how those two go together. That should not have worked. I had to listen no. to that transition like two or three times. <laughs> it, it's practically the same song. And yet they sound so different. It's the combination of Jackson Mac, as I call it, just works entirely too well. Yeah. And um, Fleetwood Mac over the weekend worked really well, too. Um, Michael Jackson and Weekend didn't play well together. <laughs> For some reason, I don't know why. Not as not as well. Um, and well, Fleetwood Mac and the Weekend toward the end didn't quite work. I, I just kind of wanted the Fleetwood Mac song, and I'm not a Fleetwood Mac fan, but I I do like Dreams. They picked the one that I like. I mean, yeah, this might actually be my pick for weakest on the album. Mm. I mean, it's just, I it just I, the the originals. I mean, it is uncanny how they occur together, mm -hmm. but I don't know if it actually works. My, my pick for weakest is later. It's not so much how it works so much as who they chose to do. Yeah. I think it should be obvious. Um, but before then, on to track four, Sad Clint Eastwood. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> it's a combination of Sad But True by Metallica and Clint Eastwood by Gorillaz. I just picture Weird Al just like giving them a standing ovation. Cause, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is just this is Weird Al level shit, without a doubt. This is the first time I didn't have to listen to a song ahead of time because I knew both of them. Just that that little uh, Clint Eastwood keyboard in, in "Sad but True" is just yeah. it just makes me so happy to hear that. Like even the Metallica, they pull off great. The Headfield impression was perfect. Yes. The guitar sounds aren't quite heavy enough. I suspect they were using single coils. The guitar players will get that. Um, so it, it took me a while to think, like, is this good or not, you know, that they're doing this? And then realizing that, yeah, it is it is just, like, parody and kind of, yeah. you know, impersonation. And the two work so well together. The transition yeah. is great. It's the best combination so far. Um, it was, again, my favorite. Um, I just wanted to hear the rap over Metallica, though. <laughs> yeah, I, you're right. That definitely should have happened. There should have been some Clint Eastwood with the sad but true guitars. Yeah. That, that is kind of disappointing that they did not do that. And I thought like, my only other real criticism is that the vocal on the Gorillaz cover was a little sloppy. 
oh, as yeah. well as he pulled off Hetfield and Michael Jackson yeah. and everybody else. He didn't really try to pull off the guy from Gorillas, and it can't Ooh. be that hard. Yeah, but I mean, that, it could be it could be a racial thing too, <laughs> you know. You no, the, guy from, you... the, the guy from Gorillas is a white English guy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, that part. All right. Oh, no, not the rap. But you're talking about the rap, yeah. <laughs> yes. Maybe. Um... <laughs> okay, I see the Damon uh, Alban. Yeah, the uh, guy from Blur. I don't remember. His yeah. Name. That's the vocal I'm saying. It was a little sloppy. They didn't really try to sound like him. Okay. Yeah, All they right. didn't do the rap, which but I was my, a little disappointed by. But maybe that was are it. unclenched now. Um, <laughs> on to track five, Electric Avenue to Hell. This is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Highway to Hell by ACDC, Electric <laughs> Avenue by Eddie Grant, and The Triple Wide by Umphreys McGee. I skimmed the Umphreys McGee song. It was this 11 minute wanky jam really? instrumental. You know, I don't think I, I, I don't remember the triple wide. I don't think, you know, I didn't even know there was a third song in there, honestly, until I saw the notes. It's an instrumental. So they just did this little instrumental thing at the end. Oh, that was one of their songs. It's that little weird bridge part that yeah. they threw in. Okay. That makes sense. That's one of theirs. Um, the guitars on ACDC sound great. Sounds just like Angus. Um, the drums, not so much. Um, I guess hard to get. I mean, Phil Rudd is probably the simplest player in rock and roll, but easily the most nuanced. You know, you can't do Phil Rudd. Um, the Grant vocal works incredibly well over ACDC. <laughs> yes, it does. And anybody covering fucking Eddie Grant is, uh, I mean, I don't like Power Man 5000, mm -hmm. but I will listen to their cover of Electric <laughs> Avenue any day of the week. <laughs> It just works all too well, except the only thing they had to change the melody a little bit because of the chord changes in, in Highway to Hell. But that's aside from that, it's perfect. ACDC over Grant, not so much. This is the song they brought in, um, what's her name, Jennifer Hartswick for. It's a fun cover of Highway to Hell. Yeah. It just didn't quite work over top of Electric Avenue, I thought. I mean, it's, it's kind of the wordplay, of course. Yeah, right. <laughs> I would have hell Drew Avenue, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I, I definitely my favorite track off the album, strongest for the album. Um, and then they go into this original and they wank for a bit too long. Uh, fortunately, it came back to the Grant and, and ACDC. Yeah. The yeah, ending they, choruses are great. As a, as a bridge, which mm -hmm. I like, oh, I didn't even know that was the third song. And that, yeah. And they ended with ACDC, which was great. On uh, to track six, Ace of Long Nights. This is my favorite. <laughs> they combined Motorhead and, and Ween. Ween. I didn't know much <laughs> about Ween except for their like initial singles, like Daisies and shit. I'm not familiar with this Ween song actually. So what album is them it from? Do a punk song, a uh, Quebec. Ironically, oh. the Canadian by marriage is not familiar with the song, the album Quebec. Um, yeah, they did a punk song. I've listened. I think I've listened to some parts of that. I don't think I've listened to the whole. Album, though. All I've heard is Daisies and whatever other single there was from their first album. That's that's I'm my knowledge of Ween. Familiar with Chocolate and Cheese and, um, oh man, I'm trying to remember some of their other later mm. albums. But oh, so... oh, um, the the Mollusk. The Mollusk is fucking brilliant. Okay. <laughs> I would love to for us to do that one. We, we, we'll, I'll put it on the list. Um, but I was very pleasantly surprised by this insane punk song from ween um it's the first i think it's the only song i listened to aside from what's on this album that i you know had to catch up on the only supplemental listening that i didn't skim i just had to listen to the whole thing granted it's like two and change um these two songs are just work great together um i actually called this as my favorite before i even listened to it because i heard the ween song and i know i know ace of spades like the back of my hand <laughs> You know, I, I just knew how beautifully they would play together. And the Lemmy impression isn't bad. Yeah. And the Ween were basically doing a Motorhead impression with that song. Right. I don't really catch much of the Ween. It, it really comes off to me. It's just a cover of Ace of Spades for the day. Well, no, there's else. a riff in there that's a, that's a, that's Ween. It's not yeah. Ace of Spades. Um, and they do some verses from the Ween song. But the two play so well together, it's seamless. Yeah, it is. This is the only song on this that I might listen to after, you know, at this point, moving forward. 
Um, I just love the way they traded off the verses. It's just an amazing combination. Uh, on to track seven, Sweet Sunglasses. <laughs> combination of Sweet Dreams are made of this by The Eurythmics and Sunglasses, sunglasses at Night by Corey Hart and Electric Feel by MGMT. I started to listen to Electric Feel and then I realized I already kind of knew it. Yeah, yeah, Electric. Uh, that was MGMT's big album. Okay, I, I didn't know the name, um, but yeah, I've heard bits and pieces of stuff from here and there. Um, really nice separation on the keyboard riff from Sweet Dreams. Right, I mean, it, the two it, are very similar. Yeah, but the Sweet Dreams riff goes back and forth between ears, and they pulled that off. Yeah. Which was nice. And the addition to guitar, of guitar to it, was great. Hearing guitar on the Sweet Dreams riff. Because it's not like the, the you know, emo Manson version. <laughs> you know, they actually oh, just right, added right. some chordal guitar over the keyboard riff. That was just silly. Yeah. Um, nice transition to, to the Corey Hart song. Um, I mean, they are the same song. <laughs> they play really nicely together. Um, and I like both of them. Yeah. And then they transitioned to MGMT, which was nice. It worked well. Have to admit, I started getting bored at this point. Uh, the playing is perfect, it's clever, but that's about it for me. This album is basically a parlor trick. Yeah, this one, I mean... This song not just this song, but this album. Oh, it's, you know... It's, it's, and I can't fault it on Freeze McGee, I get it. It was a fun little experiment for one right. album. They've done a lot of original music over 20 years. You know, I'm, so I'm not criticizing them for it. Um, It's just, it kind of got boring to me at this point. The The point of the album is, you know... We're just having fun. <laughs> Six songs was enough for me. Um, I got bored. Um, I was expecting this one to use more MGMT. Um, the choruses work nicely with the Sweet Dreams bridge. Um, and I love the ending acapella with Sweet Dreams and, and sunglasses. Using the opening lines of both. Now on to track eight, Strangletage. <laughs> A combination of Sabotage by the Beastie Boys and Stranglehold by Ted Nugent. Not really all that familiar with Nugent. Uh, I can't be objective about this one. Because I fucking despise Nugent. Um, <laughs> and I don't know Stranglehold terribly well, but I refuse to listen to it. Um, it is yeah. my weakest because of Nugent. Um, I had to take a break for lunch before before continuing on to this song. Um Beasties over Nugent works. Um, great MCA impression. You know, not a lot of people can pull off MCA. Yeah. Nugent over Beasties work too. Um, yeah, it's I, weird. The Beasties and MGMT are like the two bands that they uh, use twice in this album. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I wish they had just covered Sabotage. Yeah, me too, honestly. This one, I don't think this as a mashup really worked. Mm -hmm. all that well honestly yeah. it was okay really um i got i saw that it was five and a half minutes and with no third song i was like how the hell are they gonna do this and it just kind of kept going um i was tempted to skip it about halfway through on to but yeah, the nugent part doesn't really hold up no no it's not a very memorable part of the song honestly no, they, no, they no, should no, have just all. covered sabotage yeah. here um now, um, oh, and yeah, now on to track nine, Come As Your Kids. Um, <laughs> had to say that very carefully. I love, I love this one. <laughs> this is a combination of Kids by MGMT, Come As You Are by Nirvana, you, and You Spin Me Around Like a Record by Dead or Alive. <laughs> I have to admit, You Spin Me Around is a guilty pleasure of mine. Yes. And it is funny how it works with the other two, which are just all three of these songs are just so different, honestly. Mm -hmm. I do like, and I hadn't heard Kids before. I had to listen to that beforehand. Really like the keyboard solo on that one. Um, yeah, Tony Banks used it in the Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. <laughs> fair point, fair point. I thought it sounded familiar. Um, but I love MGMT. And I, I, uh, that first, that that album is great. I think. The, the album after that is not as critically acclaimed, but mm. I mean, it's just a fucking insane, you yeah. know, prog trip, you know, that the kids just weren't ready for. <laughs> Nirvana over MGMT worked really well. Um, yeah. 
nice sudden change into the Nirvana riff, into the, the Come As You Are riff. And MCMC over Nirvana worked really well too. They, they just, those two songs played surprisingly well together. Um, and then You Spin Me Round was just kind of crowbarred. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's just a very zany thing. <laughs> We're just like, wait, what? They just kind of crowbar you spin me around. I got bored. I paused the song to look up the chord changes to you spin me around. Um, I, by this point, I was just bored out of my skull, I have to admit. Um, on to the second song that I didn't, didn't have to look anything up for. <laughs> Frankie Zombie. <laughs> Combination of Thunder Kiss 65 by White Zombie, Relax by Frankie Goes to Hollywood, and Have a Cigar by Pink Floyd. <laughs> Actually, that's the third song. What was the, I didn't have to look anything. Oh, Stranglehold, I, I didn't look anything up. So this was the third song I didn't have to look anything up for. Or it anything is pre-listening. It is tough to determine which my, my third song swerve I like best. It, the You Spin Me Round... I... <laughs> I fucking love because it's yeah. just so out of left field. It worked better than In the Air Tonight, which had, was similar. Um, but I think I'm going to pick Have a Cigar. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. like, wait, what? <laughs> I mean, that is that is really funny to, to put that. Relax like, works really well with some heavy Relax works really well with some heavy guitar. Yeah. Um, Frank, Frankie, the lyrics to Relax over White Zombie were great. I was a little not bored for a minute. Um, Zom- Wait, Zombie over Frankie Goes to Hollywood is interesting. Hearing screaming over synth pop. Eh. <laughs> and then Cigar comes out of nowhere, and I kind of dug that. Until that was mixed with Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Yeah, I think Kind of a Cigar is my favorite third third song swerve of the album. Because <laughs> it's just, it is just so out of nowhere. I mean, mm-hmm. yes, You Spin Me Round is, is uh, out of left field. And again, it's a shame that they put them together like that. I mm. think it should be something like the third t- song swerve needed to be peppered in a little better yeah, in the yeah. playlist. And Spin Me Around is another one where I just would like to hear them do that as a straight up cover. Oh, I'm sure they have. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I need to look that up because <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah. On to track 11, Balls on the Bus. <laughs> Combination of Bulls on Parade by Raging Against the Machine and Mark on the Bus by Beastie Boys. I had to listen to Mark on the Bus. I was very pleasantly surprised. I, I don't get why they would pick Mark on the Bus. It's sung. <laughs> it's it's a regular song. song. It's not right. a rap. Right, right. It's this one minute throwaway song. Yeah, yeah. But, all right, get off the bus. And I don't think it worked too well with Rage. Mark is just too, Mark on the Bus is just too mellow to work with Rage. Right. You know, if they hadn't covered Nugent, this would be my weakest. This one is a head scratcher. Yeah. And, yeah. and finally, track 12, Bittersweet Hodge. Combination of Bittersweet Symphony by The Verve and Hajimashite by Umphreys McGee. Hajimashite is Japanese. Uh, it roughly translates to, it is the first time meeting you. Basically, cool, you know, it means nice to meet you. Oh. Um, had to listen to Hajimashite. It's like a five-minute, very almond-sounding Umphrey song. It's it's better than the 11-minute lanky instrumental, but still gets a bit lanky at the end. Um, I think this comes off more of just like a cover of Bittersweet mm-hmm. Symphony than, yeah. than a mashup. I don't the mashup partic- concept didn't really particularly work here. I and think. I don't really like either song, so it didn't really work. Um, they did kind of play well together, except the insistent snare um, on a really mellow song like Hajimashite doesn't it just gets annoying and then they just get ridiculously wanky at the end (laughs) so um do you recommend it definitely it's a fun album i think it's like one of those albums you put on if you're having a party or something Mm -hmm. to just have on yeah it uh there's there's some really fun funny moments and just some great experimentation here i'm undecided on this one it's it's mostly very clever and extremely well done. I can't fault the performances. Most of the song choices were really good. Um, the playing and the arranging, great. And even when the and when the arrangements didn't quite work, I think it was worth the arrangement, worth the experiment, right. worth the attempt. That's the thing. Yeah, not all these experiments work, but I mean, sometimes even the failure is interesting to yeah. to. Uh listened to at least once if you like mashups i think you'll probably love this album it's just not for me 
that's it for Zonky. Until next time, when we'll be reviewing Fox by Fox. Um, this, I will say, worked great as a palate cleanser because Fox and Bill Withers are in similar veins, and I don't want to compare the two because the Bill <laughs> Withers album was a fucking masterpiece. Yeah, that that's still, like, <laughs> in my head. So this is a nice palate cleanser, just a complete left turn. Fox next week. Until then, of course, always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there you there are. There you are.